G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy. Today we are going to continue with a little bit of trade rumor content. Now, there's a few different angles and ways you can make content around the trade space right now. So very soon I have a video coming out, every AFL team's trade targets for 2024. And that's where I organize all the trade rumors by team and which they're actually linked to. So first of all, stay tuned for that on the channel very, very soon. I thought another helpful way to make content for trade rumors at the moment would be to create a tier maker. I did this video last year where I ran the trade rumors and the players linked to potential moves by their likelihood in a tier maker for you. So I've been covering the trade rumor space for, uh, well, I've probably been doing monthly updates up to this point and now the, uh, the trade rumors and trade news is starting to accelerate. We're actually starting to get formal trade requests. So on the one hand, you can expect plenty of more trade content coming up, but it's also allowed me to say somewhat close to the action, bearing in mind there's so many more trade rumors these days than there used to be around this time of year. So I've got a pretty good handle on things. There will be a degree to which this is opinion. I will let you know when things are based on things that have been reported and what is just a general hunch, but we're gonna rank in the tier maker the likelihood of certain deals going down. Before we crack in, I would love if you guys considered subscribing to this channel. First of all, if you wanna keep up with A, the final series coming up, then of course the trade and draft period as well. I've set an audacious goal of trying to hit 30,000 subscribers by grand final day and looking at my analytics, literally more than half of the people that watch my videos haven't actually hit subscribe yet. So if you could do me a favor and consider subscribing, I would really appreciate that. All right, so I've got a tier maker here that I've just whipped up and uh, I'm basically gonna sort them into different tiers based on their likelihood. So we got very likely up the top, quite possible, 50-50, unclear and then quite unlikely. Uh, I didn't put extremely unlikely because if there's a trade rumor at all, there's obviously some degree of possibility. Nonetheless, you'll find that a few players do fit in that category, at least in my opinion. As you're looking at the screen there, there's a few players cut off that won't fit in, uh, but bear in mind, we will talk about them. So I've organized it by team down the bottom there. You can see there's groups of teams. There's Western Bulldogs, we've got five there. West Coast have four. Richmond have four. Melbourne have four. GWS have four. And then a few others as well. It just goes to show that that certain teams are being linked to a number of players leaving and other teams don't seem to have any retention considerations. Nonetheless, in terms of the order we'll go through, I'm gonna go through it, I'll just pick random players, I won't do team by team. I do like to actually start with putting one player in each category. So what should we do? What should we start here? I'm gonna start with Bailey Smith being a very likely trade deal. I think this one has been talked about for a long time now, coming off the ACL and uh, most likely going to Geelong. Now, this is probably more about, it's very likely the fact that he's going to leave it all. Uh, I do also think it's very likely it's Geelong. Um, you know, I think Toomey sort of added to that theory as well, but I think it's very, very likely that Bailey Smith does find a new club in 2025. So then we'll go to a quite unlikely one who is quite unlikely. Maybe Rory Lobb here at the start here. So Rory Lobb was linked to a move in particular to Collingwood, I think in a quite a meaningful way earlier in this year. He's come back into the side Given that his concerns were mainly around game time, I don't think he has the same need to leave the Western Bulldogs as he once did. So I'm going to put that in a quite unlikely pile. Uh, what about a quite possible one? Maybe Isaac coming here. You could even probably consider him. Later on in this video, I do realize the idiotic mistake I've made. And I realize that I talk about Harry Perryman, who is the photo there, as though he is Isaac Cumming. And I didn't notice it until I looked down and saw Isaac coming for a second time. And I was like, oh, surely not. Um, my eyes failed me. I do know the difference. And when I get up to Isaac coming later in this video, I will clarify the different rumors about those players. So please don't unsubscribe <laughs> just because I'm an idiot. Forgive me. Just my eyes failed me. Who's a genuine 50-50 here? Probably put Jack Graham in this pile as well. So it was reported once upon a time that he was set to join the West Coast Eagles at the end of the year. I thought timing that was weird. It was several weeks to go in the season. Riley Beveridge has subsequently come out and said that's actually not the case. He's still very much considering staying at Richmond. Apparently they've offered him a decent deal, less years than West Coast at the moment. It seems like it's between those two clubs. So he's probably one that fits in the 50-50 pile. As for unclear, unclear is probably a category for, for players that are kind of lower profile usually. And so it's a little bit murky as to what's actually gonna happen here. Maybe Riley Garcia is an option there. Now, he's probably, maybe he's a little bit more likely to leave than, than unclear. For him, it'll be about breaking into that midfield. I suppose if Bailey Smith leaves, and you know, with Libra sort of towards the end of his career and McRae also on this list, we'll talk about him soon. Um, maybe there's a chance that he stays, but I think other than him being linked to clubs and currently being out of contract, um, I have to say that's unclear, at least from my perspective as it currently stands. So let's whip through a few more of these. Maybe we'll talk about Jack McRae now actually. 
Um, this one is probably still, a, probably maybe 50-50. So he's reported to potentially want to move. The reason I'd probably elevate it to 50-50 is he's you know, spending a bit of time with the VFL and at his time of career, I think there's plenty of reason for him to consider a move. Now, I did see he wants to be based in Melbourne. We'll see what happens there. But I think given where he's at, um, the Bulldogs sort of been pretty proactive in refreshing their list. They might move him on considering, you know, Bailey Smith's already out of the team and he was dropped to the VFL. So that one's probably 50-50. Let's talk about a big profile one here in Shea Bolton. Now this one, this one you could put in quite possible. First of all, it was reported that he requested a trade. It subsequently came out he hasn't, but there's still a big suggestion that he does want to get back to Perth. Now the reason it's probably, oh, is it 50-50 or not? So the thing I'm considering here is he's got a big contract and rich men do have, do have, um, the right to say no. However, there's also family considerations. I believe he wants to, um, you know, move back to Perth for support networks around his kids. And I think clubs do tend to take a compassionate stance on that. So maybe, maybe Shea Bolton is in the quite possible thing, even though Richmond do have a lot of bargaining power. Now, maybe Dan Rioli is probably by the same token, 50-50. I think the difference, as far as I can tell, is that um, Dan Rioli Gold Coast is not a family-driven decision. Both of them are heavily under contract. Both would potentially get a really good draft hand for Richmond. So they're going to have to decide whether they gut their entire list. I know Pickett, Dusty, and Grimes have just retired. There's obviously going to be an exodus. There's still two more or one more Richmond player we haven't talked about. They'll need to balance all of that. So I think there's at least a 50-50 chance Richmond say no to the Gold Coast deal. Uh, whereas Bolton probably in the higher category because of the family factor, the family variable, which um, it's hard to quantify because I'm not involved in that situation. What about some of these D's players? Let's talk about Petrarca. I'm going to put this in the quite unlikely pile. Petrarca has had a lot of suggestion and rumor that he wants out, uh, suddenly disgruntled at Melbourne. Massive contract. The reason it's really hard to see a deal getting done for Petrarca is because A, he's you know got a huge contract. He'd really only be, you'd think, pursued by clubs in the premiership window. And you'd think if he's unhappy with the direction of Melbourne, like it's been reported, that really limits the amount of clubs he'd probably be willing to go to. He'd want to go to a club on the up. So, I mean, would he go to North Melbourne, who probably have the draft picks to satisfy the deal? It seems unlikely at this stage of his career. Would he go to St Kilda? St Kilda's probably a bit more realistic. If they get an extra pick for Josh Battle, they could make that deal happen. But again, if he's leaving because he wants to play in a team that's got a bit of direction, no disrespected St Kilda, but they're obviously not playing finals this year. So I think that would be a weird move. And therefore I think it's unlikely. And I think Melbourne will hold their stance on that. Oh my God, how embarrassing. I just realized, sorry, I'm looking at these icons this far out. I thought that was Isaac coming. This is Isaac coming. Oh dear. You guys are gonna watch like I don't know, seven minutes of footage before I've realized my mistakes. You must think I'm an absolute nuffy. I promise you, it's my eyes that failed me. I know that is Harry Perryman and that is Isaac Cummings. So just to double back down on that, Harry Perryman is linked to Hawthorne and funnily enough, also Port Adelaide. So I will put them both in quite possible. I should have done them at the same time. They're both free agents and both currently out of contract. Perryman, heavily linked to Hawthorne in particular. You'd think they'd be the primary contender for him considering you know they don't have to give anything up. They're going to go hard at him, quality player, and they'd be a fun team to play for. Port Adelaide, also a contender. Now, Isaac Cumming has not been linked to Hawthorne as far as I can see, but he has been linked to Port Adelaide, the Crows, Fremantle. So forgive me. My face, I can feel going a little bit red because I know that somebody will think I'm a dickhead for doing that mistake. That's fine. That's fine. I know who they are. I just didn't see it properly. All right. Who else can we talk about here? The Dan Houston one is interesting. Okay. I'm going to put this probably in 50-50 because, well, let's look at both sides of it. Dan Houston's heavily contracted. You'd think a pretty required player at Port Adelaide. Bit of noise that he wants to go back to Victoria. You know, considering the fact that clubs, players do, even when they're under contract, do tend to get their way. I think there's a chance Houston rattles the cage enough if he wants to, to get back to Victoria. The difference here being the motivations for Petrarca and Houston are a little bit different. So I stand by what I said on Petrarca. Houston could get to Victoria. Now, the, the latest twist in that is that apparently he wanted to go to Melbourne. He kind of balked when Pe the Petrarca story came out. This is what's being reported. That's not my opinion. That is what has been reported. And now Carlton has emerged as a front runner. The reason that makes me think, despite the big contract, Houston could end up 
back in Victoria is if Port Adelaide are successful for Isaac Cumming, which is this guy, not this guy, this guy, if they are able to get Isaac Cumming onto their list, then I think they've probably found a more or less like for like replacement there and that could open the door for Dan Houston leaving. So 50-50 because he's under contract, there's been no real suggestion Port Adelaide are keen, obviously, that would be weird to break that story right now. But I'm going to say that it is still distinctly possible. So it's going to be 50-50. Cozzy Pickett, quite unlikely, I'm going to say. I think Port Adelaide, the, basically the rumors that Port Adelaide have gone again for him. He's heavily under contract. Melbourne have, will, I'd imagine, take a hard stance against that. Regardless of whether they're still going for Dan Houston, I don't think it would be worth it to them to give up Cozzy Pickett. And I can't imagine he t- changes his mind. I, I don't think he signed that contract that long ago. So... I'll say quite unlikely, but nothing's impossible in the AFL trade space, that's for sure. Uh, Let's go to maybe a Joe Richards. This one I'm going to put in unclear because the report is that Collingwood have an offer in front of him. Port Adelaide have a four-year offer in front of him. Um, He was drafted out of their VFL team, I think, or at least he was in the VFL, 22-year-old Victorian. Um, Good player. Saw him tear up West Coast early this year. I can see why Collingwood would be pretty keen to keep him. Uh, given you know their lack of draft picks this year. They want to hold on to these types. So for me, I think it's more likely that Collingwood swoop in and, and give him a deal that stops him moving interstate or to Essendon or whoever else has been linked to him. But a four-year deal is very generous, so there's still a chance. I, I'm just going to say I don't really know which way that's going to go. My guess would be he stays at Collingwood. Uh, who else we got here? We got Mark Keane. I am going to say this is unclear as well, actually, to be honest, or 50-50. Let's move it up to 50-50. So started his career at Collingwood, if I'm not mistaken, and now is playing for Adelaide. And, you know, the, the this report is that he wants to get back to Collingwood. Collingwood do have a need for a key back. Adelaide probably also see him as a required player. But there's also the consideration that he is contracted. Adelaide will hold all the, the power there. So that may depend on other moves happening. So I'm going to say it's still 50-50. Um, it, you could also say it's unclear. But I think 50-50 is probably more on the money for that. Alex Neil Bullen I'll probably put in very likely. Now, he's one of, I think he's the only player. Now that the Shea Bolton story wasn't true about him requesting a trade, I think Neil Bullen's the only player that requ- has formally requested a trade. And I think that leaked early. So um, he wants to get back to South Australia. They haven't really got strong indication as to which club is more keen. So it feels like Port Adelaide have their hands full, so it might be the Adelaide Crows who look at this, but he's had a great year. So I think he does end up probably at the Adelaide Crows, in my opinion. Uh, who else have we got here? The Jack Lacocious story. I'm going to say it's too early for me to really know. I'm, I'm definitely not putting him in it's quite possible, but he got dropped, if I'm not mistaken, this year. Still under contract, very good player in my opinion, and it may be someone that the the Suns could let go of, considering you know oh, they've probably got salary cap issues. They've certainly got draft talent to accommodate as well, and maybe they don't know his best position anymore. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion that he goes back to South Australia, but it does sound like you know some Melbourne clubs could come calling, Collingwood or Melbourne. I'd imagine would throw the hat in the ring for someone like a Jack Lacocious. So I'll say probably. 50-50 at this point. It probably is also borderline unclear, but Gold Coast do have the decision to, in front of them. They're the ones that hold the power here. Caleb Daniel, I would say probably quite possible. Um, you know, probably fallen out of favor at the Western Bulldogs. There is a chance no one goes for him, I suppose, but I'd imagine that somebody will. And I reckon it's probably more likely than not that he finds a different home. Bit of a reshuffling happening at the Western Bulldogs. Tom Barris, I'm going to put in very likely. Um, hasn't played really since the story accelerated about him going to Hawthorne. Heaps of buzz in the West about it. Um, I He may just actually be injured. I'm not too sure. But it seems like the situation has evolved. West Coast probably unwilling to extend his contract like he's wanted. He is under contract, so the West Coast could hold firm. But I'm going to guess that he ends up at Hawthorne, in my personal opinion. Jake Waterman, on the other hand, is quite unlikely. Um, he's still contracted for a start, but there's been heaps of noise about him re-signing soon. He's verbally said himself in an interview on camera that he wants to stay at the West Coast Eagles, and that should get sorted soon. So we'll pretty much put that one to bed. Um, who else we got here? Liam Baker, I think very likely. Now, the only thing I'm not sure about Liam Baker is to which club he goes to. But it seems very likely, at least in my opinion, and it's actually not just my opinion, 
A lot of people are saying that. I think Toomey also said it would require a pretty big backflip, which I suppose is possible. And it's also possible for anyone in this top category, right? So Liam Baker is probably in the top tier of likelihood to join one of West Coast or Fremantle. It's probably 50-50 who the actual destination club is. Um, Nick Haynes, I think, is quite possible. Um, the only thing that probably puts me not in the higher category is just that the, the rumors aren't strong. But it does seem like it's probably the best for Haynes and the Giants if they offload him. And Carlton have been linked. I could see North Melbourne throwing their hat in the ring. It's just there's not a lot of noise about it, so I won't put it in very likely. But I think it's quite possible Nick Haynes joins probably Carlton at this current point in time. Um, Let's say, ooh, what about Clayton Oliver? I think it's a step down from 50-50, so I'll say unclear. So a lot of talk about Clayton Oliver potentially moving club. That was reported about a year ago um, at the start of the trade period, if I'm not mistaken. Didn't end up happening. Melbourne held firm on their stance. Contracted, required player, sure. Resurface again this year. Um, a lot of noise coming out of Melbourne. I, I don't know if I'd say it's quite unlikely because the noise won't go away, but Melbourne probably will back him in, in my opinion. So I just don't know enough to really say. I don't think it's a 50-50 situation. I think it's more likely that he stays but probably not in the quite unlikely category either. Liam Ryan, probably quite unlikely. Uh, This one, again, I think there's just too many pulls for Liam to stay in Perth. I don't think he's super interested in leaving Western Australia. I could be wrong on that. That one's probably also a little bit unclear, but under contract, a little bit of interest. I think that given the fact that he's missed a bit of football over the last couple there's a good chance the West Coast wouldn't get an offer decent enough to justify the trade, so I'm going to say quite unlikely. Jack Darling, a little bit unclear. This one is fairly low-key. Um, I think it's a case of him probably not finding himself in West Coast Best 22 next year and one year to run on the contract. It's unclear who would go for him, in my honest opinion. Um, so we'll see what happens there. It's probably more unlikely than likely, so he can sit there for a little bit, but possible that he finds a new home. James Peatling, unclear. Um, The reason being, he's out of contract at GWS, been linked to Melbourne, St Kilda and West Coast, and, you know, could conceivably look to join another club, but he's in their team, he's playing good footy, and so there's really been no suggestion that he would leave. I wouldn't say it's quite unlikely, he is without a contract, but um, 50-50 is probably over-egging it a little bit because there's been no suggestion he wants to leave, and he's currently in the team. So it's really up to GWS, in my opinion, there. Ben Hobbs, unclear. This kid, you know, I think he was a he was a first round draft pick in 2021. I remember that pick 12, I think, or pick 13, and uh, biding his time in the VFL. The development this year, I suppose, is Sam Durham, Jai Caldwell becoming genuine on ballers and good players has made it a little bit tough for him. So him and Sardis are sitting outside the team. There is a chance that he, you know, um, wants to leave, and I think someone like a Richmond or a, in particular would be a pretty good move for certainly playing opportunity. But it might not just be Richmond. So while he's contracted, um, you know, it's less than 50-50. If he was out of contract, I'd say quite possible, to be honest. Um, Again, that's not really coming from the Hobbs party, but first round, talented draft pick, biting his time in the VFL, I think he'd be pretty open to a move. Dylan Shield, this one's unclear. Um, Dylan Shield has been linked to the Saints. And um, again, it's unclear to me, A, how strong their interest is. But also, I don't really understand why. So I don't know how true that is. I think, was it last year or the year before? I forget. They did have a pop at him. He ended up staying at Essendon. Essendon could probably free up some salary. I suppose that's their motivation. But would St. Kilda take on salary or or what? Um, I, I don't really know how that would work. Um, so I'm a little bit confused by that one. However, it has been reported. So I'm going to leave it in unclear. Jack Martin. Probably unclear. Now... It could even be quite unlikely. So to clarify, he's out of contract, I think, with Carlton. And the only club I've seen him meaningfully linked to is Fremantle. Fremantle subsequently have been linked to Shea Bolton, and that story has accelerated in recent times. So you'd think they don't go for Shea Bolton and Jack Martin, even if they miss out on Liam Baker. That seems unlikely. Um, but I'd still put it in unclear. The fact that he's without a contract does suggest he could be on the move, but he may just stay at Carlton. Who knows? Luke Parker, unclear. I don't know exactly the details of this, but obviously veteran player. Sydney now have an oversupply of midfielders in what was previously a midfield depth issue. Um, Liam, uh, sorry, Luke Parker has been reported to be open to opportunities to, to move elsewhere, and I think North Melbourne would be a great candidate, but there's just not enough in this story yet for me to 
put it any higher. So at least Josh Battle is actually one of the more high profile free agents that could potentially leave. I'm gonna say this is quite possible. I do think it's a bit of a red flag that he hasn't signed up yet to join the Saints and or stay at the Saints. And Hawthorne have been coming hard. And again, like I've made the point with Barris and uh, and Perryman, that's who it is, not coming, Perryman here, that Hawthorne is such an attractive destination right now. The fact that he's unsigned, the fact that they're the front runner, leads me to believe that I think Josh Battle will probably go, but probably not with the same degree of certainty as that top category there. So that's my read on the situation, guys. Again, this this can evolve very quickly. It might it might evolve in a week, but I'm thinking, you know, sometime throughout September, I'll do another version of these. A, there'll be new trade rumors. We'll have more information. Some of these players might sign at their current club. So that will do for now. I hope you got something out of this video. Let me know in the comments what you think, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.